Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our celebration. We'll begin our celebration this day with the sign of our salvation, as always, in the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My brothers and sisters, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the community of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with, with, with your spirits are coming together as God's family this morning. Take an opportunity to welcome everyone, no matter where you find yourself, what particular class you might be in. Welcome to our celebration. Just a few more days, a few more precious hours, and we begin to celebrate not only Christmas, but the Christmas season. We'll begin our celebration this morning, as always, first of all, in the silence of our hearts, to thank God for the blessings that he gives to us each and every day, blessings of our families and our friends, the gift of life itself that God gives to us, and the gift of eternal life he promises us. We'll also take an opportunity at the beginning of our celebration this morning to ask God for his peace and his forgiveness. We recognize our sins and weaknesses and frailties and need for God's mercy in our daily lives. So let's begin our celebration this Advent, this Advent day with the silence of our hearts to thank God, but to also ask him for his peace and his forgiveness this day. And so we say, Lord Jesus, for the times we may fail to love and serve God our Father above all things in our daily lives, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, for the times we may fail to love our neighbors as ourselves, Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, for the times we may fail to love and respect ourselves and all the gifts that you entrust to us in this life, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. So let us pray. <clears throat> o God, who through your only begotten Son have made us a new creation, look kindly upon us, we pray, on the handiwork of your mercy, and at your Son's coming, cleanse us from every stain of our old way of life. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, I, the Lord your God, teach you what is your good and lead you on the way you should go. It, to go within the commandments, your prosperity would be like a river and your vindication like the waves of the sea. Your descendants would be like the sand, and those born of your stock like its grains. Their name never cut off or blotted out for my presence. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response to the responsorial psalm is those who follow you, Lord, will have the light of life. Those, Those who, who follow, follow you, Lord, Lord will, will have, have the light, light of life. life. Blessed the man who follows not the counsel of the wicked, nor walks in the way of sinners, nor sits in the company of the insolent, but delights in the law of the Lord and meditates on his law day and night. Response, Those, Those who, who follow, follow you, Lord, Lord will, will have, have the light, the light of, life. of life. He is like a tree, planted near running water that yields its fruits in due season and whose leaves never fade. Whatever he does prospers. Response, those, those who, who follow, follow you, Lord, Lord will have, have the, the light, light of, of life. life. Not so the wicked, not so. For the Lord watches over the way of the just, but the way of the wicked vanishes. Response, those, Those who, who follow, follow you, Lord, Lord will have, have the light of life. A reading from the letter of James. Be patient, brothers and sisters, until the coming of the Lord. See how the farmer waits for the patient fruit of the earth, being patient with it until it receives the early and the late rains. You too must be patient. Make your hearts firm, because the coming of the Lord is at hand. Do not complain, brothers and sisters, about one another, that you may not be judged. Behold, the judge is standing before the gates. Take as an example of hardship and patience 
brothers and sisters, the prophets who speak in the name of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks to God. Please stand for the gospel. My brothers and sisters, the Lord be with you. And with your A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. The angel Gabriel was sent from God to a town in, of Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man named Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And coming to her, he said, Hail, full of grace, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at what was said and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of David his father, and he will rule over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. But Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I have no relations with a man? And the angel said to her in reply, The Holy Spirit will come upon you. Therefore the child to be born to you will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, Elizabeth, your relative, who has also conceived a son in her old age, and this is the sixth month for her who was called barren, for nothing will be impossible for God. And Mary said, Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. Be it done unto me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. Please be seated. Just a minute little thought to share with you today. As I mentioned to you at the beginning of Mass, we just have a few more precious days, a few more precious hours, and we begin our Christmas celebration. Christmas isn't just for one day. Christmas is a whole season. It's two weeks, as a matter of fact, for even longer, for three weeks. Um, we end at the baptism of Jesus. So, but we're still in the Advent season, of course. And you may not realize this, but um, there are two important figures that we hear a lot about um, in the Advent season. Two people that are very, very important to salvation history. Mary is one of them, and John the Baptist is the other. But today, we hear the famous story of the Annunciation. One of the uh, things I miss about this pandemic, I was supposed to go to the Holy Land this year, this past March. Probably won't go this March either, but um, the very first place that I always go to for the last eight or nine, maybe ten times that I've been there, is always to the place where this particular scene happened. The church is run by the Franciscans in Nazareth, because we take care of our own. <laughs> And he always says, Father, Father, come, come, come. I want, you to, I want you to come down here. And he leads me down these steps into these caves and things like that. And there's a big grate on the other side, and people are standing on the other side. He says, you can come down here and pray. He says, this is the place where the angel Gabriel appeared to Mary. It's always special for me to hear that particular story. If you believe salvation history, salvation history, it's God's, God, salvation history is nothing more than God coming to us and saving us. Saving us from what? Saving us from us. <laughs> saving us from us. And yet salvation history relied upon Mary's yes. You may not realize this, but I'm sure you do, or I hope you've heard this. Mary, at, the, at this particular time, when this episode happened, and she gave birth to the child Jesus, she was in between the ages of 14 and 16. Many of you are 14 through 16. He waited for her yes. God had a plan. It was a wonderful plan. 
a plan that invited that invited inv that invited all people, included all people for all time. And he waited for her yes, because he didn't want to force her to say yes. This is going to be up to you to follow my plan. You'll know part of the plan, but for the most of it, you won't. You'll just have to trust me. Put your faith in me and trust in me. The reason why I tell you or read this particular gospel passage about Mary's yes is to remind you about your yes. During this Advent season, I told you at the beginning that we concentrate on those two important figures, John the Baptist and Mary, and God's reliance on them to say yes in their daily lives. And how do you do that? Well, I guess we consider this, this is, we consider this to be the season of giving. And how do you do that? Um, well, there's different ways. They say it's the, the season of giving is the season of you can give your time, your treasure, or your talent. Um, to give you of yourself things that are important to you. And this season of giving is always a giving of self. And you may think that, you know, well, you know, I don't have much treasure to give away this season. Um, I do have some talents. But I guess the most important thing that we give away is the season or that particular gift of time. Um, Time is that one thing that you can never, ever, ever replace. You can get money back, somebody can pay you back, somebody you've helped somebody with your talents or whatever else like that, they can help you. But time is the most precious thing that we have because we can never, ever, ever get time back. So when you give your time, you're giving something that's very, very precious. During this Advent season, we ask God, um, for to open our eyes, open our hearts. I remind you that all, all the time to be ever vigilant, watching for Christ to come to you in your daily life. And I don't mean, you know, thunderbolts and lightning, very, very frightening and all that stuff. I'm just talking about the opportunities that you can share your time with someone who may need it. Um, it's giving of oneself during this Advent season and the season, Christmas season. The Annunciation, um, when Mary re asked, was asked, and she said yes, as I said to you, she doesn't plan on, she didn't know the rest of God's plan. Outside of that one vision from the angel, the rest of her life, she had to let life be. Whatever the plan was, she had to accept it. Not only to accept it, but the, the good times, but also actually the bad times too, watching her son be tortured and killed. And yet she knew it was all part of God's plan, that somehow, some way, all things would work out. So this Advent season, these next couple of days, you know, before the final hours, we begin our Christmas celebrations. Take an opportunity to remind yourself about the yes that God asks of you every day to follow him to trust Him, put your faith in Him and trust in Him. That no matter what may happen in life, no matter how things may unfold, don't jump to the guns, don't jump on and think this is the end, this is the end, this is the end. God has a plan, it's a wonderful plan, it's a loving plan and it includes you. That's the first thing. Second thing is, take an opportunity, if this is the season of giving, to give them the most precious gift that you can possibly give to someone and that is the gift of your time. The gift of your time, your grandparents, your parents, your friends, people who might need someone just to say, hi, how are you? How are you doing? And show your concern, no matter how that may play out. Take an opportunity to do that. Um, this is how the Advent season unfolds. It unfolds each and every day and in each and, each and every action that you uh, put forth in your daily life. So we ask God for his continued blessings, blessings upon all of you. They say that there's... Um, the light at the end of the tunnel is getting brighter. We've got the vaccine now and things should be starting to, starting to ease up a little bit in the next couple of months and things like that. Um, 
But again, don't underestimate this wonderful opportunity during the Advent season to look to the opportunity to give to one another. Okay, give to the ones you love and also the people I don't know, people that, might, that may come along my way, along my path. So we ask God's blessings upon all of you, all of your families and friends this, this Advent season and then well into the Christmas season. Amen. God bless. So with faith and trust in God our Father, knowing that he always hears our prayers, he knows our needs and desires, we present to him this morning our petitions, and the response to our petitions, as always, is Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, let us pray today for the church throughout the world that we who await the coming of Christ may experience the love and mercy of God our Father he brings to all and offers to all. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our families, for our, our friends, and that we may grow in love and respect for each other in this time of Advent. For this, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In need, we pray for all of the sick, those in hospital or nursing homes, or maybe those confined to their own homes, that the gentle love and mercy of Jesus will touch our brothers and sisters in their hour of need. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In need, let us pray for all the poor and those who dedicate themselves to serving our brothers and sisters in need. That we may find the joy and love of this season and share those gifts with others. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In the silence of our hearts, we take an opportunity to offer our own prayers and petitions. So Heavenly Father, we ask you to hear these petitions and those petitions which we hold and whisper in the silence of our hearts, known only to you. We make all of our prayers with trust and confidence through Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. So blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed, blessed be God forever. forever. And blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed, blessed be God. God forever. pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May the sacrifice of our worship, we pray, O Lord, this morning, be offered to you unceasingly to complete what has begun in sacred mystery and prayerfully accomplish for us your saving work. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. So my brothers and sisters, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of our human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago and open for us the way to eternal salvation. That when he comes again in glory and majesty, and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise we now dare to hope. And so with all the angels and archangels, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. 
At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, Jesus took bread, and giving you thanks, Father, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, Jesus took the chalice and once more giving you thanks, Father, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by his Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring us to the fullness of charity and love together with Francis, our Pope Thomas, our Bishop, and all your people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, St. Joseph, the Apostles, St. Peter, Francis and Claire and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. For through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. So our Savior's command, informed by his divine teachings as brothers and sisters, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress and worry as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Our brothers and sisters, the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer to each other some words of peace. peace. Lamb of God. You take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. My brothers and sisters, Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ keep us safe for eternal life. Amen. Since you're not going to be able to receive communion today, 
There's a prayer we pray in the church for those people who may be watching a mass, maybe on television or a computer or something else like that, or in their classrooms, such as yours. And again, <clears throat> we may not be able to receive communion today, but there's a prayer called the prayer for spiritual communion. And I'll pray this for you with all of you. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things and desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Amen. So let us pray. We implore your mercy, Lord, that this divine food may cleanse us of our faults and prepare us for the coming feasts ahead. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Before we do our final blessing, there's a brief message and greeting from our principal, uh, Mr. Lavore, and we'll ask him to do his blessing or do his, do his greeting now. Hello, and Advent greetings to you all. I'd like to take this opportunity to address you, our Holy Cross family. As you know, we're now into our third week of Advent when we light the rose candle in our Advent wreath, symbolizing joy. Why joy? Well, this is because we recognize that we are close to the coming of the Christ child who was, is, and always will be King of the universe. We are also, as Catholics, always mindful that there are those amongst us who are not experiencing joy at this time. And this, of course, is due to the difficult circumstances which we find ourselves in. This year, as part of our 27th annual Christmas gift card drive, we have committed to help 15 needy families who find themselves facing desperate times. To those of you who have contributed gift cards already to our Christmas gift card drive, I wish to sincerely thank you. Your contributions are greatly appreciated. If you have not already contributed and are able and willing to do so, I encourage you during these last few days of our drive to either drop off a Walmart gift card at the school or to send an electronic one to the school by following instructions that were sent out earlier this month to parent emails. I would also like to take this opportunity to wish everyone watching a safe and blessed Christmas holiday. May the Christ child bring you and your families much joy, good health and peace. God bless. So my brothers and sisters, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. The Almighty God bless and protect you now and always, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our Mass, our celebration is ended. Go in peace. Thank Thanks be to God. God. Have a wonderful finishing of your Advent season. Have a wonderful Christmas season. Um, I really miss you guys. I've been seeing you guys here in the halls and in your classrooms and things like that. So I'm still here at St. Peter's. Um, if you'd like to come visit, please do that for Christmas. If not, please follow us along stpeterswoodbridge.com. All of the masses are, on, are online. Um, if you can't come to Christmas uh, personally, at least watch it, watch it uh, online and join us certainly there for, and we'll be praying for you and thinking about you, okay? Have a wonderful Advent season and God bless. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Oh, come on.